So first off, incredible event, stealthy, not stealthy. I think we got the go ahead to even acknowledge we were going to Seattle when we were on on a plane <laughs> headed there. And what a beautiful view. If you'd like to see our pictures, just hit our Twitter. But you know, most importantly, um, this was the big announcement for what I would call the consumer elements of leveraging uh, generative AI and, and chat GPT. And, you know, we, we learned uh, a bunch of things. So first of all, the positioning of this, which I think is key, is, is a co-pilot uh, for the new Bing search and the Microsoft Edge uh, browser sidebar. And what that does is I think that's setting the stage. It says AI is not in charge. It's it's helping you. And I think, you know, Dan, you've written books on this. Uh, I have not. Um, but then again. You were busy. People, you were people, busy. You didn't have but, time to write a book. Then again, do people really write their own books? I mean, does anybody write their own books? Oh, now, now we're going to do that. Now I'm going to have to. No, 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 no. I mean, listen, nobody writes anything. But anyways. I think Copilot. I use Chat GPT. There we go. I said no, write I'm, a book in my voice about digital transformation. No, I think that's cool. I, I prefer analog transformation. So let's just get that out there. Anyways, come on, Daniel. Let's get serious here. So uh, this is not just slapping a logo on uh, OpenAI. Um, essentially, hey, I'm hearing a um, voices behind you. I don't know if you have TV on or. That's something? No? Squeaky chair. Oh. Keep going, buddy. Keep squeaky. going. I'll try to not squeak. I'll try to not squeak. Just stay focused. Yeah. Stay with yeah. me, buddy. So, so, so first off, this is not just slapping a logo on OpenAI and ChatGPT. Um, Microsoft has what's called the Prometheus model, which uh, enables it to not make up stuff. And as I think what we've seen from OpenAI and all that good stuff, has a tendency to ghost uh, and, and drift. Uh, there's also the Microsoft version of responsible AI that's uh, that's in there that 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 is is unique. On Bing, there's also a new a brand new core search index, which isn't necessarily 100% related to Prometheus or the new AI capabilities. But what it does, it does pull up a prompt when it does feel like uh, it is a a good moment, good Prometheus. Uh, moment. Uh, we saw a lot of examples of planning trips. Uh, we saw uh, creativity uh, examples. Uh, we we're going right into the search bar. Uh, we saw some cool Bing travel search. I thought the most powerful example was using the Bing sidebar where it had a PDF of, I think it was a gap earnings and essentially says summarize it. And it summarized it. Uh, I tried it on my own and a couple other ones. It's not perfect, but the ability to summarize uh, documents, and you can imagine uh, this ability uh, put into Teams, which I think there is actually a new version of Teams that uh, enables uh, transcription and netting out uh, exactly uh, what, what happened. Um, Sam Altman, uh, co-founder co and CEO of OpenAI, showed up for a hot minute. I think he, he flew in. I uh, never actually heard him talk. He reminds me a lot of, of Elon Musk, you know, short and sweet, very intelligent uh, and, and, and to the point. The company did uh, a lot of drill downs on responsible AI and how it has been architected uh, from <coughs> the grounds up architecturally. They showed a three layer cake using models, safety systems and applications of 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 how they do that and you know you can just imagine the types of things all the way from politics to race um and you know nefarious instructions of of how to hack stuff you can imagine uh what those layers of intelligence uh need to put out there uh net net uh the company got an absolute uh, they scored points, right? Anytime, Bing, when you're the 7% market share player and you can get mentioned as taking out 
the top search engine that's been out there for over 20 years, Google, you've <laughs> you've scored uh, the points. Now, is that a is that a a three minute, three hour, three day, three week, three month, three year advantage? I have no idea, but we're going to explore a little bit of that when we talked about what Google uh, announced the uh, uh, the day after. Uh, today, there is a testable new edge with the Bing sidebar and the new Bing. So that was available to uh, a limited audience, uh, which, as we will talk about when we hit Google, uh, is a very different approach. And quite frankly, Microsoft is first to market with this to the public. Yeah, I think you hit a lot of things on the head there, Pat. I, first of all, it was really interesting to go up there not knowing exactly what was coming. You know, was it chat GPT-4? Well, not exactly, but it is more than chat GPT-3. And let's be candid. This was like one of the best, worst kept secrets ever. Um, Microsoft had already made the big investment, had already announced its intent to start incorporating uh, generative AI into more and more of its portfolio. And that's where it's heading. Yeah. And this was the first iteration. Why search maybe is a good question to stop and ask here. Why search and not something else? Well, Dan, you had a you had a really good tweet out there during the financial. I did. I was proud of that. And apparently uh, it, 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 it made a few ripples and waves. But I mean, I was really just, you know, in fairness, it wasn't really great analysis. I was just <laughs> I was just rehashing something that got shared. And, you know, uh, Real simple math, you know, Bing has around 7% of the search market or less, 7% or less of the search market. And, you know, Google has the rest. And so I'm not gonna talk about Google now because we're gonna come back to Google. But what I'll say is they did a economic uh, estimate of the value of Microsoft taking 1% of search. And right now, based upon the current market size, every 1% of search is $2 billion of annual revenue. <laughs> so. In a market where, you know, there's uh, what, first of all, we're in a challenging macro. So if you're Satya Nadella and you're saying, how do I grow during this tough macro? Well, where can you take market, right? That's the first place you should probably think about investing is where can you take market? Well, every 1%. So if Microsoft can make a, a bing in the market or a ding in the market, by the way, check my Forbes article, best title ever. Um, I don't know. Ours was pretty good too. So. Yeah. Sorry, dude. I usually give you props. This one's all your own to, number. This, this one's going to me. Um, but in all serious, make it ten percent is twenty billion dollars of annual re revenue. Um, let's talk about the technology itself. Is great. We had the chance to beta it. It's not yet great in everything. There's still a lot of learning and training to do. When I asked it the question of who's a better analyst, Dan Newman or Patrick Moorhead, I didn't think <laughs> the answer was as good as it could have been. Kind of a joke. But it does seem that certain parts of the model have been more refined and probably because of the way it's been tested, the way it's been utilized. And then, of course, based upon all the publicly available data on the market and a lot of the power that's going to come long term behind chat GPT and behind a new Bing and a new edge um, is going to be as companies are expanding to having more uh, what I would say unique data. And that's where it's going to start to be in the apps, meaning in the app ecosystem, in teams, when it starts to get behind the company's firewall and into the company's own data sets where it can tap the public data and tap the ERP data, tap the human resources data, tap the uh, BI data and start to incorporate that with, that's when it starts to get really smart and really interesting, especially for companies that have treasure troves of unique data about their uh, customers or competition or markets, et cetera. So a very interesting uh, pathway. That's what I see here, Pat, the pathway isn't just about being an edge. It was very logical, first place to take market, and obviously a place where the company has long been seen as a distant second <laughs> to the current uh, uh, front runner. Um, I guess I'll, I'll kind of uh, wrap up there with you know uh, the overall impression that I have is that this is gonna take some time. And despite the fact that we used it, we liked it, it looks good, it's exciting, and it's definitely a watershed moment, I think we can perfectly segue into Google by saying, this isn't gonna be an overnight shift of massive amounts of market share. But what I can say is they've changed the game and the players all have to come back on the field. 